Deepa led her dog, Benji, over the footbridge and down to the deserted roadside cafe. Yeah. It had been closed ever since the bypass opened. Now only the occasional cyclist passed this way. A sign swung in the breeze on one of its remaining hinges. Its faded words declared defiantly, Burgers, fries, and full English breakfast. It sounded very greasy. Deepa pushed the door, and to her surprise, it swung open. She apprehensively looked about and couldn't believe what she saw. The interior was immaculate, considering how long it had been closed. Chairs were neatly arranged at tables with scrub plastic tablecloths on which condiments sat in strict formation, and the counter's teaspoons gleamed on the end of their chains. Deepa stepped inside. Benji, her dog, whimpered <laughs> apprehensively. He might have remembered that dogs weren't allowed in cafes, or perhaps something else was bothering him. Deepa was too intrigued to wonder what it was. The cafe should have been derelict. Benji refused to follow her in and remained on the doormat, shivering. Deepa confidently went to the counter and would have bought a packet of chips if there had been anyone about. Out of the corner of her eye, she glimpsed something sitting cross-legged on the jukebox. When she turned around, it was gone. By the counter were some swing doors that must have led somewhere, so they would just push them open and walk through. Filling one wall on the filling one wall of the huge kitchen was a cooking range, and it had been blackened with years of burnt fat and the occasional uncontrolled fire. Then Deepa realized why Benji had stayed outside shivering. Hovering over the scene of a thousand culinary disasters was a dense smudge the size of a small sofa. It had arms, a tapering tail, and a face with a wide, greasy grin. The harder Deepa stared, the more solid it became. A white table with a vase of flowers looked very out of place in this hell's kitchen. The contrast with the blackened cooking rage was so striking, Deepa didn't immediately see the slender, airy shape sitting beside it. Too tall to be a fairy, this entity had an aura of celery about it and wore a wistful expression, like a flower that needed watering. Deepa turned to run out of the kitchen. The greasy smudge snatched up a huge iron frying pan and blocked her way. A customer! A customer! Deepa was alarmed. Ghosts weren't meant to recognize the living, let alone, alone threaten to cook for them. Well, well, I, I wasn't stopping, actually. The smudge wasn't going to follow the interloper, uh, wasn't going to allow the interloper to escape that easily and hovered closer. Oh, but you must. I, I, I only have enough money for a packet of, of, of chips, said Deepa. Oh, ha! You're the first customer we've had in years. We wouldn't dream of making you pay. Deepa thought fast. Uh, oh, okay, well, uh, anyway, I, I'm a vegetarian. This kind of dampened the greasy smudge's enthusiasm and, obviously offended, it backed off a little bit. Deepa recovered her curiosity. This place has been closed for years. I remember the last owners leaving. Who are you? Me? <laughs> I'm the ghost of a million burnt burgers. The greasy smudge spun on his tail and flourished a frying pan in the direction of the white table. And there sits the spirit of side salad. And what was the creature I saw crouching on the jukebox? The two ghosts glanced at each other, shaking. Oh, that creature mourned the spirit of side salad. I'd rather you not mention it. The smudge gave an evil chuckle. <laughs> Them two don't even sit and can't even sit in the same room together. Well, who is it then? insisted Deepa. He's the cholesterol goblin. The spirit of side salad floated up from its seat. Well, as you're a vegetarian, what could be better than a nice 
salad with fries, insisted the greasy smudge. And I know I had some veggie workers around here somewhere. The smudge threw open a freezer's lid and rummaged through its contents like a whirlwind. No, 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 really, protested Deepa. I, I, dinner's waiting for me back home, and, 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 and I told my parents I wouldn't be long. The smudge tossed a large bag of frozen fries and a catering-sized box of strange-colored burgers into a deep fryer full of boiling fat. Won't take but a minute! Hot oil spattered the walls and grated carrots flew as the two cooks attempted to outdo each other. Will you be more careful? chided the spirit of side salad as it chopped cucumber and made fancy flowers with radishes. Between them, the ghosts were preparing enough food to feed a convention of backsliding dodgers. There was no way they were going to get that meal onto one plate. The greasy smudge tossed the fries and the burgers and the hot oil as though it were flipping pancakes. You'll start a fire, Deepa warned. Fire, laughed the smudge. Oh, we used to have them here all the time. Oh, those were the days. No sooner were the words out of the wide, greasy mouth than the deep fry slipped from his ghostly fingers. The contents fell onto a red-hot element of the cooker, and a ball of flame shot up into the ceiling. Woo! Deepa ran for her life, back out through the swing doors into the cafe. The round, wicked-looking cholesterol goblin was sitting cross-legged on the counter, shrieking with laughter. <laughs> No insurance. <laughs> then it rolled onto the floor and bounced up and down like a yo-yo. Deepa seized Benzie's lease and they ran. Neither dared to look back until they reached the safety of the footbridge. <sighs> a column of smoke and fire was billowing into the sky. The fire department answered her emergency call in minutes. Though by the time they arrived, there was nothing left of the cafe. As it was due to be demolished anyway, not many questions were asked about the cause of the fire. Despite what had happened, Deepa knew that its odd occupants were still out there, somewhere, in some restaurant, some cafe, boosting the world's cholesterol levels. <laughs> And there you have it.